All right, welcome one, welcome all, welcome back to another Call of Duty Black Ops roundtable here on Erev TV. Uh, to give you guys a little recap on what this is and what we've been doing with it, we've been pulling in uh, members of the community, uh, league admins, uh, just uh, sort of figures here, players, everything out there, uh, mod makers as well. Had some guys from Europe on the show. And uh, we've really just been talking about sort of the future uh, of this game, what needs to be done with it, what's being done with it, and uh, sort of the direction that it's going to take. So uh, tonight we're going to do something uh, a little bit different in the sense that uh, we're going to bring in people that actually have, uh, you know, I mean, they have experience with the search and destroy community, um, but uh, that, that was not their game type of choice. And it would appear that the game type of choice for Black Ops is not going to be search and destroy. Uh, so hopefully we have uh, some interesting uh, ideas for you guys to go over and a lot of experience in the channel anyway. Uh, so uh, uh, I have three guests tonight. Uh, back with me again is going to be uh, Ted uh, Sang is going to be here. So his opinion is always valued. He's been on every roundtable that we've had and uh, we appreciate that. And also in the channel with me are going to be uh, Gone Mad and Method here. Now uh, these guys again have a lot of experience in the CTF, uh, Sabotage, COD 2, COD 4, uh, whole COD series here. And uh, I'll let these guys go ahead and introduce themselves and uh, let you guys know who they are and what they're doing. So, uh, Gone Mad, take it away. Hi, right, um, so, yeah, I'm Gone Mad. Uh, played for uh, Area 51 back in all the way since uh, United Defense. Uh, so, we had the, we won the championship first season in Cal. Um, went on the COD 2, uh, picked up Method, and since then we've been pretty much one of the, the top uh, competitive teams in Capture Flag and Sabotage all the way to, uh, well, hopefully in this game. All I guess, right. uh, also, um, I am a software engineer, so I um, have some experience modding and whatnot, and I do plan on uh, making a competitive mod similar to Pam, um, but getting rid of a lot of the annoying stuff as much as possible. I hate annoying stuff. Um, Method, uh, give me your spiel here. How's it going? It's Method. Uh, just like you said, I joined 51 in uh, COD2. Been gaming with these guys for a long time now. Um, we're kind of happy that CTF's making a good headway in this game, and we just want to bring our experience to the table since we've been playing it for a long time uh, in Cal and TWL, wherever else it's been actually offered. All right, and, and, and just to clear everything up for everybody, in, in addition to your experience playing the game, you guys also have had a hand uh, in, in the rule sets for, uh, for Cal, for, um, which of course is gone now, but for CTF and Sabotage, correct? Yeah, correct. we were the, uh, the admins for Sab Season 1 and 2 for COD 4, um, and we always put our input in for any of the rule sets, and actually TWL, even, they, they would pretty much just talk with us directly for whatever rules they wanted to use, or we wanted them to use. Okay. So, there you guys have it. Those are our panelists for the night, and uh, this is going to be a little bit shorter than the last one, um, but uh, we'll try to keep it shorter so people will actually listen to the whole thing this time around. So, uh, get some opinions out there. Um, first and foremost, Ted, uh, with your dealings with, you know, the other leagues around here, or uh, in North America, and not here, um, as far as what game types are going to be used, and your pulse on the community through the forums, all that kind of thing. Um, is, is CTF the front runner you're seeing right now? I, I would have to say yes, but at the same time, uh, search, the search and Destroy does have a lot of followers. Um, there seems to be a lot of people either on one way, uh, on one side of Search and Destroy, or the other, people saying that it, it is valid and we should keep it and everything else is just, you know, garbage, or that um, it needs to be dropped by the wayside. You know, and I think, uh, I think that's an interesting um, statement to make, simply because we don't know exactly what works. And I, I said this in my blog, and, and it's been reiterated a thousand times, we don't know what works yet, because there aren't any competitive leagues out there that have offered matches yet. Nothing's been officially announced. So while I would say that CTF is right now in, in the front of a lot of people's minds, Search and Destroy certainly has not um, gone away by any means. Well put. And uh, that's something that, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to reiterate uh, to the Call of Duty community that, uh, in particular, when we, when we were asked to release the SIVO rule set, um, you guys got to remember, and I just want to point this out, this isn't, you know, uh, um, my plea for SIVO or anything like that. Uh, these tournaments are months away, so some things are going to be thrown out there. We need, you know, 
input on them, get them, you know, shaped up and put out there, but uh, it's time to test stuff. So I, I want everybody to keep an open mind for things coming out from leaks right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to help, uh, you know, educate some people tonight with what we're going to talk about. So um, method, gone mad, whichever one of you guys wants to, uh, you know, take on this, or if uh, you guys just want to, you know, split it up, whatever, I don't care. Um, can you talk a little bit... Uh, of course, it goes back to Call of Duty 2 with CTF, which was just, you know, a wonderful game type, a lot of fun. But let's let's go to more recent times here with Call of Duty 4 and Sabotage. Can, can you talk about the rise, the fall, what killed it, um, you know, why it took a little bit longer to get going, and, uh, you know, that sort of thing, how that fits into what we're going to be doing here with Black Ops. Well, um, it definitely was a... You know, it took a little while just because out of the box, the game type was so broken that, it, you know, it wasn't playable. I remember scrimming and it took uh, 45 minutes just for the bomb to blow up. And, you know, in competition, you can't have that. You don't want to rely on, you know, one round and then that's it. Um, so that's initially why, you know, it took a little while for that to catch on. I actually had to uh, modify the game type itself so we can get, um, basically so a round would end. We, we ended up with going with seven best of seven, um, and then after after five minutes, the respawn time started increasing. So just you know, people could die and people get a plan off, and the match would actually end. And I have to say, uh, as I told these guys before we got started, sabotage was actually the most fun that that I had in Call of Duty Four for for all the tournaments and everything that we got for Search and Destroy. Sabotage was just flat out fun. So. Um, while we're on the subject of sabotage, and, and you know, of course, with Black Ops, we're we're talking about CTF uh, and, and other game types, but CTF is going to be the focus tonight. Um, so, sabotage survived in in North America at least to an extent for you know a season or two with with Cal and Ted. We've touched on this uh, mildly throughout you know our past um, Black Ops roundtables and things like that. Is uh, do we need if we pick a game type? Uh, like sabotage, or we pick a game type like search and destroy, or we run leagues that run both of them. You know, do we run a risk of splitting the community the way that you know the Call of Duty 4 community was quote unquote split with the sabotage league and the search and destroy league? I mean, did that actually affect us in any way? Well, I think the in reference to whether it split us in Call of Duty 4, I don't think so, um, because eventually everyone. The sabotage kind of went went by the wayside, and you know, there's um, search and destroy was so much in the spotlight. Um, you know, I think uh, I was speaking about this the other day on Jock Yish's um, Bash and Slash podcast that using multiple game types in in leagues isn't necessarily a bad thing when done correctly. At the end of the day, competitively, what needs to happen is we need to be able to take our game type, our, however we play this game competitively, take it to sponsors and say, this is how we play our game competitively, this is why it's fun to watch, and this is why you should put money into our tournaments. Um, you know, so if we can use multiple game types and have this easily understood, fun, competitive structure in place that sponsors want to put their money into, then yes, that's fine. We can do it. If not, then, you know, maybe we should think about going to one single game type. But it's all really going to depend on how these next few months play out. Okay. Um, that's exactly my thoughts on that. And, and again, that's a reiteration, uh, but one that needs to be heard by, by everybody out there. So, uh, Appreciate that. Now back to method and, and gone mad here. Um, we it's sort of what we touched on last night before we even you know uh, got started today. Um, some rule sets have been released, or, or not not so much released as they've been posted on on forums from you know ESL. We did a post on Sivo. Uh, I don't think CG has actually posted anything you know specific, but they are a champion of this best on uh, best of three format. Um, can you guys give us uh, you know either one of you? Um, your spiel on, on what should uh, what should the game type be, or what should the rule set be for CTF in your guys' opinion? Whether you know how many people are playing, weapons, time limits, uh, all that kind of stuff, and tell and give us some some reason behind what you guys are talking about from your experience playing uh, COD two uh, and, and COD four CTF SAB, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'll let you guys have the mic. Sure thing. Um, we've actually gone over with a bunch of people from our team, and we've actually asked people outside of the team too. 
we came up with like a basic list of what we're starting off of. Uh, the first thing that we notice right away, it's six for six. That's what CTF has always been, UO, COD2. And the maps are uh, larger, uh, which support that amount of players. And it, it always played better. And the reason why we stick by that, because in uh, CTF uh, in COD2, Cal tried to force CTF to five versus five to try to attract um, some SD teams. And it really didn't attract many teams in the end. A bunch came over, and then they just didn't like the gameplay. Wanted to focus on SD, which is understandable. You know, that's the game they were playing. But all of the CTF teams absolutely hated it. Everybody that was actually focused on CTF loved the 6 versus 6, and when they moved it down to 5, it just changed the game. Um, it made it slower. Um, and with CTF, we all, everybody that actually played and enjoyed it loved the fast-paced action. Constant uh, grabbing and chasing of flag carriers and returns, you know, at the enemy base and whatnot. And the 5 versus 5 really slowed it down. It's only one player, but it seemed to make a big difference. Uh, these maps seem to have the size and the actual uh, number of routes to each side to support CTF very well. So we're happy about that. Um, the one thing we just want to kind of say is, you know, the SD guys that want to play it, cool. It's fun, really fun. But it's not 5 versus 5 from what we the experience that we had through UO and 2. Okay. <clears throat> Let's come back to that. Ted, do you have any, any thoughts on the 6v6 5v5 deal? You know, I think it's it, it's a hard it, it's a hard dynamic because yes, the the UO and the, the Stark um, Stark. What am I talking about? Um, the uh, Call of Duty Two, the older CTF models use six v six, but it, it's kind of like that thing. Just because we did it before doesn't mean we should do it again. Um, although the maps are significantly larger or some of them are significantly larger and can support 6v6 I think you know I, I'm not going to sit here and say 6v6 is bad because by no stretch of the imagination is that true and on certain maps I would love to have 6v6 um, my only concern with 6v6 comes through sponsorships and marketing of the game and and land tournaments um, six players on a team makes things a whole lot more complicated um, like method was saying you know you, you wouldn't think one person makes that much of a difference in game well it's kind of the same thing one person out of a game in a LAN really does make a difference as far as travel expenses and things like that so I think you know at the end of the day it's just gonna come come down to testing um, and, and seeing what works and what doesn't work you know if would it be beneficial for us to be able to say, okay, we're going to play 6v6 in Capture the Flag, Domination, and all the and every game type we play? Yes, it, it would be beneficial if we had a set number of players across every game type. Um, is that going to happen? I don't know. That's, um, that's really my only concern with uh, the 6v6 format, guys. I... I agree with you that it, you know different game types play better with a, a certain amount of people in them, um, but I do wonder about the money, you know, the economy side of the thing. As far as we, if we want to take this game full scale competitive, uh, get those the sponsors pumping, get the lands pumping. Uh, I think you know in our prime uh, in Call of Duty 4 in North America, I think maybe at any given time we had three teams with travel assist as far as you know paying for help paying for their travel and of course there were more than three teams over the course of Call of Duty 4, but at any given time I can only think of three that were ever active at the same time. So food for thought there as far as you know 6v6, 5v5, and it's something that needs to be tested. Um, I'm all for it, but we'll we'll see how things go there. Um, back to to Gone Mad and Method here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the mod that you're working on uh, for Treyarch's World at War that you're hoping to port to, to Black Ops once it's ready? Yeah, I mean, I could talk about that. It's, you know, I, I've only been maybe like a week development or whatever um, here and there, but um, everyone's familiar with Pam. Um, the developer of that disappeared after, what, like halfway through um, Modern Warfare 1. Um, so, you know, I kind of didn't want to have to rely on that guy. So, um, I plan on doing something similar. Like, I'm going to take a lot of the aspects from that of, you know, easily being able to change configurations and whatnot. Um, but I'm also, 
I plan on going in depth on a lot of the really annoying features, like one being the knife, I can't stand that, um, the auto lunge, things like uh, that just take away from the gameplay. Um, and it won't necessarily, like, leagues don't have to adopt it, but I want the option to be able to turn that like, on and off. Um, there's really been no word of when the mod tools for this game are going to come out, so um, the scripting itself between the games has not changed, so it should be a fairly easy port from World of War to uh, Black Ops once they do release mod tools. Okay, and uh, either one of you guys, can you touch on some of the stuff that we... Uh we released on EREV last night uh, as far as the SIVO, you know, tentative rule set. I want to make sure that's clear that, uh, you know, nothing's set in stone. But the tentative rule set released by SIVO last night, um, your guys' issues with it other than, you know, the 5v5, 6v6, as far as maybe spawn timers, uh, that kind of thing? Um, we haven't scrimmed much, if at all, yet. Uh, I think we got one in, and it was kind of a waste of time because the other team couldn't get the people, but... Um, spawn times and everything, all that comes down to, and this is from making the mod in SAB, we scrimmed a shitload to get that mod working right. Um, so it comes down to, like you were saying earlier, you, there's no competition out right now. Scrims are there, but, you know, nobody has a rule set to go by. So once we get the mod tools and our mod set, then we're going to scrim it a ton. And in, as in SAB, we, we get the, the people that we're scrimming's feedback, too. I'll go and talk to their team captain, have them talk to the teams, you know, what'd you like, what didn't you like? And that's how basically we got the SAB mod going. And the same was our input uh, in COD2 for CTF. You know, we went to the league admins and whatnot. But we talked to all the teams that we'd play. What'd you like, what'd you didn't like? And, you know, everybody, the smarter teams would come back and give us good responses, which we all pretty much compiled together to get a good gameplay going uh, for the leagues. Okay. Um... Last but not least here is, well, okay, maybe not last, but uh, sort of the one of the, the last things I want to touch on as far as CTS spe uh, specific here. Um, uh, there's been a lot of stuff thrown around for everybody as far as, you know, what stays in the game, what takes out of the game. And right now, there's no way to take stuff in and out of the game other than to completely take out everything or completely leave everything in. And um, then we're running on, you know, this honor code system that everybody's talking about in the forums, which... You know, I'm, I'm not going to make any secret of that I think is a horrible idea. Um, but I don't want to get into that as far as the honor code thing. I want to know, if you guys had mod tools today, and you had the option of taking in, taking stuff out, you know, leaving stuff in, um, you know, where do you guys sit on, you know, your claymores, your, your perks? Um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you guys wouldn't want, you know, tubes in or anything like that. But some of the more sure. in, the, in the middle of the road things here that could possibly work. So your guys' thoughts. Yeah. On that. It's not a problem. I've got a actual list of what we made for it already. Um, and this isn't, you know, nothing. none of this is set, but the only major perk that we want to remove is um, steady aim. Um, just because it, it's really bad. Like when we first started SAB, you'd have full team, six, five or six guys running around with uh, steady aim, SMGs just bouncing around every corner. And it just got really bad, so we removed that, and the community liked it a lot better. Um, limiting the gun classes down to, like, two SMGs, because they're still pretty powerful even without steady aim. I think it's, like, two SMGs, one shotgun, one scope, unlimited assault, uh, one LMG. That was basically what we did in SAB, um, and that seemed to work pretty good. So, again, this all comes down to scrimming. But uh, explosives are pretty much gone, except for the hand grenades. Remove all the launchers, claymores, C4, stuff like that. It's respawn game type. Uh, so if you have unlimited, basically unlimited claymores to defend a point with, it, it just gets... Nobody wants to play. It gets that annoying. Um, launchers, RPGs, China Lake, all that stuff would be gone. Um, let's see what else we got here. Equipment, we'd still leave some in, and again, this isn't, you know, nobody's really decided anything yet. This is just what we came up with with an initial talk about it. But you leave in, like, the camera spike sensor jammer. Um, that way your perks like Ghost and whatnot can still work. Um, respawn times, we think about 10 seconds would be fine for CTF. Uh, you can also base it on the map size, too. But again, that all this stuff requires scrimming. So we're really stuck waiting for the mod tools to come out so we can get our, the GM can finish coding the mod and 
get the first run of it out so we can start scrimming with it and make some you know decisions based on uh, gameplay there. Also, a lot of the, the attachments that are extra weapons, like the master key, the flamethrower, that, you know, that doesn't belong in competition at all. Um, and the Kimbo weapons, um, we saw how that was abused in Modern Warfare 2. You don't want that. Are you sure? Because the flamethrower's badass. <laughs> that would be cool. I'm laughing when I use that thing. Um, okay, guys. Uh, last thing I want to touch on here uh, is going to go to saying... Um, Again, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the SIVO, you know, quote unquote rule set that came out, and again, it's a it's a loose iteration of it. And uh, my argument that the bare bones mode that has been released with the game is, you know, it's not a mod; it was released with the game for a reason. Um, we currently have no way to control perks, weapons, um, you know, attachments, all that kind of stuff. And of course, I don't think anybody wants to play the game completely stock uh, in any game type. So. We have this bare bones mode, uh, we have the ability to use it, and uh, what that does, for those of you who don't know, it takes out attachments, takes out perks. Uh, so it takes, it strips the game down, um, but I don't want to say that it strips it down to COD 4, because it is a different game, it's a different engine, different maps, different game types even. So, uh, Ted, can you talk a little bit about, you know, is this the best, because it's the only option we have for an even playing field, I feel. Uh, you know, is this hurting us, is this helping us, are people going to, you know, take to it, are we going to have a mod before these tournaments come out? Um, just your thoughts on the bare bones mode. You know, I uh, I've talked to Ian a lot um, over the past couple of days when he was formulating this rule set, and I I understand uh, why bare bones was selected. It's it's just that whole thing. You know, we can sit here and talk about the honor system. Um, you know, for our scrims and this, that, and the other thing, but. As a competitive organ, as a competitive tournament organizer, you cannot it, it, having something like an honor system in official matches would be a logistical nightmare. And I'm speaking from experience when I say this. Um, you know, when you have a 500 some team tournament, which is probably what it's going to end up being when Alienware finally announces their Black Ops event, um, because Alienware Arena is that large. You know, you're going to have claims coming out that, oh, this guy used a, a stun grenade, a concussion grenade. This guy had a rocket launcher, or this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, you say that, okay, they automatically saved the demos. Well, what happens if something goes wrong? Or what happens if one person's isn't working? This game is already buggy enough. You know, what do you do then to, to that claim? So, you know, I understand the bare bones, and um, I'll, I'll support it, you know, in, in the sense of a competitive standpoint, but I'm also a little bit wary that if we go bare bones and then come back, there'll be some community backlash. So I think what, what's probably going to end up happening, and, and let me rephrase that, I hope ends up happening, is that other leagues may be consider not going bare bones or consider offering um, different events that are bare bones and aren't bare bones. I know ESL is planning to offer a number of community cups. So just again, just so we can test these settings and see what works and what doesn't work. But you know, I think at the end of the day, we, we bare bones really isn't exactly where we want to go. But I, but I do agree, we, we need to control it the best we can for a competitive platform. Right, and, and that's the point that I wanted to make. Not only, um, you know, is the game glitchy and, you know, demos could work and not work. Um, when you're talking about, of course, you know, tournaments as big as Alienware Arena may be, uh, or hopefully will be for this game, um, it, it, if, if you have 500 teams and you have, you know, even 10% of those teams dispute, then you've got some really busy admins. Uh, and especially if it's related to, you know, he used this, she used that, and it's just hearsay until so you look at the demo and you have to spend the time looking through it and... Um, I, I, I think that would just drag things out and make it more of a nightmare than it needs to be, and uh, nobody wants to, to spend, you know, days and days and days waiting. So that are, that's my thoughts on, on the bare bones mode. Uh, sorry, Ted, go ahead. And, and then the other thing, you know, uh, something else that we consider, what happens if someone accidentally uses something that's banned? And, you know, you might say, oh, well, well how, how could that be? You know, well, what if they switch classes in-game and they don't have one of, the, one of those classes set up for competitive play? You know, I have, I have classes in my game right now that are strictly, I use in scrims, and then I have my pub, my, my pub classes. 
but you know what if what if I switch to a, a pub con, a pub class in in a complete stock uh, match and accidentally use use something because I'm just so used to using it all the time. You know how how do you admin that? How do you moderate that? It, it, it's a whole nother level of complexity that I think a lot of people don't understand simply because they aren't league admins. They haven't been in that situation before. Right. Yeah, and there's you, no precedent. You'd have to be too. really strict. You'd have to be really strict about it. Both GM and I admin for Cal. To do something like that sounds easy on paper, but it's just not going to happen. You know, okay. you, I'm, I'm glad people agree on that. <laughs> I was afraid that uh, perhaps I was being a negative Nancy there, but uh, it's not that I don't trust the, the COD community, it's that I want things to run smoothly. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like it'd be great and easy, you know, tell everybody no no uh, extra classes that aren't set up for comp, but with that amount of people playing, it's it's just not going to happen. Okay, guys. Um, I think I've touched on pretty much everything I wanted to touch on today. Uh, Again, this was uh, sort of a talk about CTF, the history of it, where uh, these guys that have done some modding and adminning for it in the past, who haven't really had a whole lot of a say um, from you know this point previous in, in Black Ops as far as uh, what they think should work and what shouldn't work. Um, you guys, uh, it, you know, straight down the list here, Gone Mad Method, Ted. You guys have any final thoughts here uh, before we uh, we say goodnight to everybody here? So, uh, Gone Mad, your your thoughts here, CTF, uh, Black Ops, anything you got? Uh, I just really hope it's 6v6. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was to the point. Uh, method? That, that and we can get rid of the, the knife. <laughs> just all, just right. all the, all the all right. annoying things in the game, you know? Once we get the mod tools, we should be able to move forward with it. You guys don't ask for much. I like that. Uh, Ted? Yeah, you know, I, I just hope that that we see some good patches maybe maybe Triarch will you know give us something good and uh also a quick shout out to uh my blog head over diverse.com i'm starting a new weekly blog called call sign bravo 6 uh, where i will be talking about the various things happening within the competitive call of duty community every week so check that out uh, my first one's up there right now so yeah that's all i got and I have read it, so make sure you guys check over there and uh, and and get at that. That's just uh, it's good stuff. So you guys will want to read that if if you have you know anything to do with Call of Duty. It's uh, informative and uh, just a good read. So make sure you guys check that out. And uh, as far as uh, my final thoughts here, um, I hope to hear some more from from leagues here as far as what they're planning on doing and uh, looking forward to to getting it out there to the people as far as. Um, you know, making it a little bit more broad spectrum uh, in what people get to see and what they're going to, you know, perhaps be uh, be entered in. And I want to remind everybody exactly, you know, as far as you know, potentially having hundreds and hundreds of teams for these these tournaments coming in, in you know, maybe late December, early January, in there. Um, you know, the, as small as the competitive community is right now, uh, we're not even going to make up, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent of those teams in that tournament. So, uh, if you guys got some news about about Call of Duty or anything like that, or your thoughts or opinions, um, you know, come to us, and these actually get out there to a, to a lot more people than we see in the Call of Duty community. So, hopefully, we can entice some other people to get involved with this and make these tournaments and these sponsors and everybody else just uh, a click here, and we can get this game rolling. So, that's my uh, my deal on that, guys, and. Uh, Again, thanks for tuning in. This was uh, another roundtable event here at ERF TV, and uh, we'll be doing one pretty much every week. Uh, we've got some Euros lined up to come on next week. Uh, have some trouble nailing them down uh, again from the previous time that we had them on. And, of course, uh, you can always tune in here for, uh, for news from League Admins, uh, guys like uh, Method Gone Mad here, Ted as well. And uh, actually, we may be able to pull Hackett on here in, in the near future for a little bit of a nostalgia talk. Nice. Uh, about Call of Duty 2 and, and COD 4 and stuff. So he said that he'd, he'd like to come on and we'd really like to have him. So uh, there's that. Uh, as far as E-Rev news, guys, stay tuned for some uh, current Alienware Arena stuff from uh, the Counter-Strike department as well as StarCraft 2 we've started casting. Uh, really cool stuff. StarCraft 2 finals are coming up here on E-Rev TV. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And uh, that's all I've got, guys. So we are out of here. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the cast. And uh, thanks to my three guests for being here. Thanks.